Hey, how's it going? I'm Will and I'm part of the 99 Bikes green team for 2022. I have received a sparkling brand new mountain e-bike, which is the Merida eBig 9 300 SE. Here are some of my initial thoughts. All right, so let's give this bike a crack. This is one of my first times riding an e-bike, especially an e-mountain bike. Never really done that before. In fact, I've barely ever ridden a mountain bike before. So this is a excellent learning experience for me in general. I mean, firstly, one of the biggest things that you notice when jumping on a mountain bike in general, and an e-mountain bike as well, is the complete difference in the weight of the bike. I mean, this thing's 25 kilos, whereas my road bike was, what, seven, eight kilos? Something like that. And some of that comes down to just the added bulk of the bike. Uh, these things are just built tougher because they need to go over more things. And another massive part of it is these 29 inch or 29er wheels. These wheels are freaking ginormous. I mean, I'm used to little road bike wheels that are like this big. And these huge wheels can get over anything. I've already taken a few little shortcuts here and there between tracks where I'm a slightly off road and going over rocks, going over dirt and logs and sticks and whatever. It just powers through it. So much fun. Um, it's a different type of fun as well. Like going on a road bike and going on a nice journey and exploring places like this through Olympic Park is great. But then what this bike is allowing me to do is to be able to explore different areas, like the more off-road areas or places where I wouldn't necessarily go on a road bike. Plus at the moment, in Sydney especially, and I know along a lot of the east coast of Australia, there's been a lot of rain to the point where it has caused flooding across where I live in Parramatta, across a lot of Sydney and southeast Queensland. And some of the locations where I would normally cycle through have been actually closed off recently because they've been flooded or they've been covered in sticks and all sorts of crap from the floodings that have occurred. And having a mountain bike like this means I don't need to worry about that. Whereas on a road bike, I would have to completely avoid the area and go on something completely sealed. But on a mountain bike like this, I can power through it, power over it. Now that is fun. Another thing I'm going to be looking at over the next several months especially, and then of course ongoing as I own a brand new e-mountain bike, is going to things like bike parks. So there are quite a few mountain bike parks around Sydney. Um, I've been advised of a few at the shop at 99 Bikes as well while I was there. So Sean gave me a few recommendations like the Oaks uh, Bike Park out west near the Blue Mountains. There's one out at Hornsby, which is apparently quite good. There's a whole bunch across Sydney. So I'm really looking forward to getting into those. And even here at Olympic Park, there is actually a small bike park, which has just a few little technical bits and pieces. It's got a few sort of jumps and dips and rises and all that sort of thing. So some of my first thoughts on this e-bike. Um, look, it is a lot heavier, but what the e-bike part does with that is that it really gives you that boost. I've heard someone else saying that an e-bike, it feels like someone is pushing you up a hill. <laughs> and that is exactly what it feels like. Hills? What hills? Hills don't matter anymore. There are certain hills where I haven't been able to actually cycle up them on my road bike recently, partially because my road bike is a little bit broken, rear derailleur. And so going up hills has been a bit of an effort. And hills always was a bit of an effort anyway. But on this bike, when I've got the power assist, it, like even just on, like there's three levels. So you've got eco and then uh, trail mode, and then it's like boost ultra mode, or I don't know what they call it. <laughs> but you've got the three levels. And then of course you've got completely off, which is just cycling as you would normally. So even on the eco mode, going up a hill, if I just shift down a couple of gears, I can easily get up any hill. It is amazing. Now, this is a bit of a conundrum for me because I want to get up there, but there's no path. So what do I do? I'm gonna go off-road. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is easy. Easy. It's like nothing. Like that was, nothing at all and that's the funny thing about going in the full power mode even though i'm going like uphill barely pedaling 
it, obviously you don't want to use the full power mode too often because it does drain your battery quite significantly, quite quickly. So if you can, or an e-bike especially, try and use eco mode or even just turn the bike off or turn the assist off just for a little while so you can extend that battery as much as possible. But if you need to get up a hill, shift down. That's the first thing is don't just rely on the power modes to get you up a hill. That's what I was told at the shop anyway, is shift down first, get yourself in the appropriate gear. And then if it's still hard or if you wanna go faster, that's where you use the assisted power modes. So today I'm taking the bike out to Olympic Park as part of my test, run and ride and to try and just get used to the bike. Uh, Olympic Park is great because there's a lot of segments of road and huge open pathways where you can just get used to a bike. In fact, when I was first learning to ride a road bike back, uh, would have been 10 to 15 years ago, I took it to Olympic Park and I just rode around Olympic Park over and over and over again until I got used to the whole idea of cycling. With this being a completely new type of bike to me, I need to get used to how it works because it works a little bit differently. And not just the fact that it's a road bike versus a mountain bike, it's also the fact that this is an e-bike. And so I've got different controls. I've got a power level versus a second gear. So it's a different beast to get used to. Another thing I'm trying to get used to at the moment, which is taking a little bit of time, is the difference in how the bike brakes. So on my road bike, I had sort of rim brakes, standard, brakes that I'm used to, but these ones are the hydraulic disc brakes and they work very strongly. Like they clamp and they clamp hard. I've made some uh, a bit too abrupt stops a couple of times, but it's all part of the learning process. If you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. One of the other differences with a, an e-mountain bike versus a road bike is you just don't go as fast. Um, like on a road bike, I would easily reach 40 kilometers an hour, but on an e-mountain bike, I'm lucky to get to 30. And a lot of my commuting is done at and around 30 kilometers an hour anyway, so that works out for me. And another thing I'm gonna have to get used to uh, is this being a mountain bike and me taking a lot more off-roads is cleaning. I've already made this bike an absolute mess. <laughs> but I had fun doing it. And so once again, thank you to everybody at 99 Bikes for having me to be part of this green team for 2022 to promote sustainable living, getting out of the car and onto the bike to reduce congestion on the road and to reduce your carbon footprint in general and all of that good stuff. If the weather forecast is anything to go by over the next several weeks, months, who knows, it's gonna be a wet one. I mean, we're at the end of a La Nina event, which is where the temperature of the oceans and yada, yada, yada means that there's lots of rain in Australia, especially along the East Coast at the moment. But even with the rain, being on a bike like this, still better than being in traffic. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.